I'm coming from probably a different perspective, probably being maybe the only primary school teacher in the room, perhaps. But uh, just to give you a context of where I'm working, it's um, a school that was built in the 1980s with two teachers. And if we were in North County Dublin, it was the countryside, and now we have 52 teachers and nearly 900 pupils. And of those 900 pupils, about at least 56% would play in heritage other than Irish. So we have a collection of languages in our school, and we are, I suppose, blessed with it, but we're, we're also challenged by it, because at least of those 56% of our intake, uh, most of those ch children would be speaking at least one other language at home, other than English, um, and we're trying to teach a curriculum that oftentimes wasn't established with those children in mind. So I've been involved in assessment for learning for uh, quite a number of years. I completed a master's in Trinity, in science, technology, and learning, and just the year just uh, previously, uh, I completed a master's in applied linguistics with Mary Mackler College in Limerick. And this, the presentation really is based on the research that I did um, over that time. So just to, to give you a flavour of the, the research, and I won't go into all the um, specific academics of it, not to bore everybody. Um, it was a project that was done with three uh, learning support students. I work in learning support environment. And they were three students who would have English as an additional language. They would be roughly about seven and eight. Uh, one has a specific learning difficulty, a, speci a specific speech and language difficulty, um, and the others would be coming, as I say, using English as an additional language. Um, so trying to assess those stu students and trying to assess their oral language is a huge challenge because um, you're, you're assessing them alongside their, their colleagues, and yet we have huge expectations and if they're speaking a different language at home, obviously we have to take that into account. Mm -hmm. So to, this is just taken directly from our curriculum, which has a lot of aspirations in it, and what, many of them are very lofty and very admirable, but for a classroom teacher, oftentimes it can be very difficult. They see assessment as being on a spectrum, so that the child would lead some of the assessment, and that the teacher leads a lot of the assessment. But what we're finding is, and the department would probably back up this fact, a lot of assessment is teacher-led. The teacher saying this is what quality looks like, and therefore students are not really given their own voices to say what does quality look like. So I suppose maybe my research is trying to maybe push the conversation in the other direction, so that there's more self-assessment, more conferencing, and more um, concept mapping and portfolio assessment. So these are kind of what we would be considered the <coughs> parts of an assessment for learning culture, so a formative assessment culture where students are leading the assessment. And there are a whole load of parts to that, like for example, a diversity of approach, active participation of the students, a cyclical approach to assessment. But I just want to focus in on one today, which is consistent communication through reflective feedback, which sounds very lofty, but really what it's about is getting students to think about their learning, getting them to talk about their learning, to talk to themselves and to one another so that they can identify, well, what does quality oral language look like and how can I recognize it rather than somebody else telling me this is what it looks like. Um, which is actually harder to do than we think uh, because we're coming to oral language from our own perspective and we have to kind of let them see what does quality oral language look like. So as I say, my participants was three students, which is quite small I understand, but there's a lot of transcribing over the summer months, I'm still not over it. And the duration was eight weeks, so this research was going on for eight weeks, even though I was doing a lot of this before and after the formal part of the research. And it was in a learning support environment, and I was using action research for anybody who's interested. So really what I wanted to do was to draw technology into the assessment of oral lang language. And I did that using a very simple online tool called Vocaroo. Vocaroo.com is very simple to use, and that's just the interface when you log into it. And the reason it needs to be simple is because I have seven and eight-year-olds trying to use it. And while they're far more tech-savvy than many of us, it needs to be something that's very effective and easy for them to use. So basically, it's as simple as you log on to Vocaroo and you click record and you can record your voice. Because this is an oral language assessment. And what it does is it converts your recording into many different formats. So it can, uh, it can record it into or convert it into a um, digital link, sorry, there like that or into a MP3 file, or indeed any um, sound sharing device. But the one I looked at most especially was the QR codes, which people probably have come across before. 
So it, it downloads whatever recording into a QR code, which can be saved or it can be printed out and it can be stuck on a classroom wall. And then that can be used again and again by a student to look back and look at what they have done before, which is hugely, hugely influential. And the, the research both that I have been involved in and the research that I was looking at certainly that set up. If you can get students to look back at what they have done already, listen to conversations they've had, listen to reflections they've had already, it has a huge impact on the quality of their oral language and indeed on their own, their own self-belief in their oral language, which is hugely important. Um, in case anyone wants to scan that one, well, that's just a sample one and you won't go because of ethics approval. I can't share any of the recordings that I made of the students, obviously. But just this would be an example of one that we made. The children would have played a TH game. So it's something really simple. Like, for example, we'd have to do an activity where they have to find words that have TH at the end of the word, TH at the start of the word. And they might have to do something simple like, I have to be a chicken if I hear a TH at the end, I have to be a bear if I hear a TH at the start. And they loved playing games like that. But what they would do is they would record maybe a little part of the game, and then they would record their reflection on it. So I knew five TH words, or I recognized three TH words. Something really simple like that. And then what they would do is, once the recording was made, it was put into Vokuru, and it was changed into your QR code, we would often print them out and put them on the wall. The following day, the following week, they would come back, scan it with the... I used a mobile phone, I had permissions to use it in the school. You could also use an uh, iPad if you wanted. And they would use that and scan it and listen back to what they had heard. And it was really, really effective because what I found was it might, they might com come across TH words in a week's time and they could see on the wall, there was my TH game, scan it, listen and go again, which was really great, it was great for them. <coughs> um, so what I was trying to do really was to align technology with assessment and to show that what you're doing in assessment, the idea of recording and replaying, technology can assist that. So really that was the whole purpose of it. And when you analyze how students engage with reflection, you find that they use the technology to encourage and develop introspection. So the technology was allowing them to think about their own learning. It was allowing them to think about themselves and their own the quality of their own, their own oral language. It develops ownership over their language assessment. <coughs> Rather than me saying to them, you did a good job, they could say, yeah, I was doing a good job there. And what I found is as the eight weeks went on, they didn't want to record everything. They just wanted to record things that they were proud of. And that's showing me that they're assessing themselves. In the beginning, it's novel. I want to record everything. And then suddenly they realized, well, actually, no, I don't need to record everything. I just want to record the bits that show my best work. So they took ownership over it, which I think is extremely important. And the idea of creating a culture of looking back and feeding forward is extremely important. You're not going to act. This isn't going to be something that happens once. It has to happen continuously. I know this is only three students in a school, but they talk to other students. And they bring their, their feedback back, and they bring their QR codes back into the classroom and share them with other children as well. Um, and even though these were young students, this could easily be replicated with older students, and I have done it informally with other students as well, not as part of this research. Excuse me. After, uh, just the, this is the more academic side of, the, of my research. After I had collected all those QR codes, I transcribed all of the um, conversations we had, which was many, many, many conversations. And then I used um, a corpus analysis tool to, to, to analyze the, the way they were using pronouns, like possessive, effect, reciprocal, and relative pronouns, how they were using verbs, tense and pluralization, adjectives, all those kind of things. And I entered it into a, a, a corpus linguistic tool called AntCon, and it showed me how many times they were using different elements of language. And I could chart over an eight week period the changes in the way they were using language. I was also able to see what kind of patterns of language were emerging. And I could see that even in a very short space of time, students were able to latch on to things, for example, a quality way of using <coughs> verbs, a quality way of using um, sentence structure, and repeat it. So it was a great way of just charting how language is progressing over time. So again, as I say, the, the, the evidence really suggests that students are really eager to do this. They're eager to engage in reflective conversations because they like talking about themselves. And they like talking to other students about themselves. And they really like talking about the quality of their work. The technology is novel at first. It is very exciting at the beginning. I want to hear myself. But after a while, it just becomes part of the classroom. It becomes part of every day. And that's really what it needed to be. And that's why the technology needs to be simple. 
the analysis of language which shows that there's changes in the type and nature of language, language that students use, and that's more, as I say, the academic side of it. And it does develop a community of uh, a community approach to language learning, so that the students are doing this together. It's not me dictating to them; they're actually involved in conversation about this. Um, there are some changes in how students use language, and I described that we could see the sentence structures how they changed over over time. But I did notice, particularly in the area of verbs, that you know if a new verb is introduced to them, they tended to latch onto how that verb was used once and then kept going with it. So there are certainly areas that need to be developed on that, and I, I understand that. Just the last point there, the building up for language events, it, it enables the cycle of assessment that I'm saying is really, really important. So over time, you're building up a catalogue of learning, and we could see it pasted on the wall, this quality language that they were recording, and over time, they could go back and scan it again and again. Um, anybody with any questions or comments, I'm happy to take them there.